All right, going to be doing just an unscheduled live stream here. Got a couple of videos I need to cover. And uh, so I'll just wait a couple minutes here before I get started. Just here at the office today, checking some things and, and um, going to mute this here. Uh, just <clears throat> had a couple people send me links to videos. So I want to just, you know, kind of discuss that. And uh, so I'm going to do a, just a real quick little live stream here. Um, doing pretty good. Thank you for asking, Brother Jacob. Um, anybody can tune in here real quickly. Um, so I'm going to do a screen share thing, I guess, here. So I'll just give a just wait a couple minutes here before I get into these videos. Uh, 1:05 p.m. So it's cold in here right now, so I still got my winter coat on, my scarf around my neck here. Uh, it's pretty chilly in here right now. We're supposed to be getting a big snowstorm tonight, so we're just here for a few hours, and uh, then we're going to be heading out. Um, hi everybody seeing all the other people saying hello so forty degrees there well it's actually about forty degrees here in the office right now so pretty chilly but outside it's actually it was below zero this morning um so but we'll see about getting started here I guess uh, put these things on all right I'm gonna do screen share and um, Share screen. Okay, did I do that right? Uh, maybe is it this one? I'm probably doing something wrong here. Like that. Something like that. I don't know. See if I can do this. Can everybody see this thing here? If I go like this, we'll be bigger. Just trying to figure this whole thing out. Okay. I guess that's pretty good. Uh, I don't know why the window is smaller. I don't. I don't get that. Um, uh, let's see here. Streamyard. Uh, I don't. Know, I must be doing something wrong, or I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Maybe this one. Okay, that's the one. I was going to have the thing there that I was going to be in the little corner thing, but I guess I should just. There we go. Okay. Um, the topic is going to be just ans answering a bunch of weird videos. This one was sent to me just as a. Um, just as kind of a check this out. ESV Catholic edition Bible. Um, just let me know if everybody can hear the sound real quick. Okay, can everybody hear that? Sound is okay. All right, good. Let me play it here.
Okay. So you can't hear the audio. <laughs> oh, brother. Um, okay. Can't hear the audio. Why can't you hear the audio? All right. I'll eventually figure this thing out. Maybe someday. Uh, all right. Let me just get back to this. Um, is it the headphones? Maybe, you know, do I... If I take the headphones off, maybe that will do it. I don't know. Let me try that again. See if you can hear it now. Wait, I have to do this. 2002 in the United States. So I bought a copy, and since then I've been using it very frequently to study scripture and to teach, even though I've learned the biblical languages. Uh, can everybody hear it now? Okay. All right. Now let me go back here to this thing here. Uh, let me try it this way. Wait, no, this one. I think that's the one I want to do. Okay. There. I think I have it. All right. Now let's watch this here. I'm delighted to introduce to you the new English Standard Version Catholic Edition, published by the Augustine Institute. Uh, I'm so happy that this has finally come to pass. When I was a first-year master's student at the Augustine Institute back in 2005, my professor told me when I asked about Bible translations that he really liked the new English Standard Version, which was a Protestant Bible that it was originally published in about 2002 in the United States. So I bought a copy, and since then I've been using it very frequently to study scripture and to teach, even though I've learned the biblical languages, uh, the, I always go back to the ESV and it's been very helpful to me in my own study. Just about a year ago, uh, the bishops in India uh, reached an agreement with Crossway Publishers in the United States to publish the English Standard Version Catholic Edition for the first time. So this originally Protestant translation was reviewed by a team of Catholic biblical scholars and theologians in India and then it was approved by the Indian Bishops Conference uh, in 2018. So the Augustine Institute now has the privilege of offering the English Standard Version uh, Catholic Edition to the market in the United States. And we're so delighted to be able to bring this great translation to you. The ESV is known for its fidelity to the original languages, for its great attention to detail, for its preservation of uh, English biblical style. So. <laughs> I just got to stop here for a minute. Yeah, I've been saying this stuff for years. These new versions are just Catholic Bibles. That's all they are. You read the uh, Second Vatican Council. They talked about making translations jointly with separated brethren. That's all this thing is. You know, it just cracks me up, you know. And it's the same things that they always say. It's it's very accurate to the original languages. And, and it's been a, a good translation. And we, we recommend it. And, and, they, and there's fidelity to the text and all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> cracks me up. So we'll continue here. Good comedy. So when you think of, well, English standard version, what's the standard version? The original standard version was the King James version. The King okay. It's funny. They always have to talk about the King James version. They always have to go back to the King James Bible. Interesting. I mean, I've, I've been in this whole issue now for many, many, many years. All the new versions have to compare themselves to the King James Bible. And yet they'll say the King James Bible should just be old and thrown out and whatever else. And yet they all compare themselves to it. Funny. King James Bible, which was then revised, became the revised standard version. All right. Eh, he's, did you hear that? Let me back up just for a minute here. He totally lied. Eyes became the revised standard version, RSV. Uh, no, actually, the revised standard version came out much, much later. I think in the 1950s sometime, the revised version, the Westcott and Hort one was the one that was supposed to be a revision of the King James Bible. And it was not a revision. It was actually a reversion, so to speak, to the uh, Catholic manuscripts, the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. So he lied to you. Oh, it's a revision of the King, you know, the RSV is a revision of the King James. No, it's not. It's from a different manuscript family. But that's how these people do it. 
And the ESV is really an update of the RSV with about 60,000 changes from the RSV to the ESV. This Bible uh, preserves fidelity to the original Greek and Hebrew. It preserves the theological terminology that we find in biblical English. Uh, and it provides us uh, as Catholic readers with another option. Right? We've been, we have a, a very small handful of, of biblical translations and the ESV Catholic edition is a new and really good option for us to study scripture well uh, and to come to know it more fully and perhaps use that as a springboard to learn Greek and Hebrew uh, and get even deeper into scripture. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, see how they do it? Oh, you can start out with your English Bible, but you really need to study the Greek and the Hebrew to get a deeper understanding. Uh, clergy versus laity, you know, the whole thing. Good night, people. So I'm, I'm so happy that we're able to bring the English Standard Version Catholic Edition uh, to you here in the United States. Uh, and I'm delighted to be part of it here at the Augustine Institute. Makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, doesn't it? <laughs> so this here, I'm not, I can't even play the music for this. It's just weird. You know, this, this whole thing here, uh, I'm just going to mute it. But, you know, this just happened here January the 8th of 2020. And, um, you know, you go through here and, I mean, the Pope's just sitting there just watching this garbage. You know, I mean, this is Book of Acts for sure. I mean, it's, it's right there, you know. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, they, they, they were doing this in, in the scriptural times, you know. Man, what a what a fool! Look at that old fool there. I mean, my goodness, what are they doing? Well, they're they're trying to bring in the Antichrist system, and they're going to make this guy here uh, make a mockery out of Roman Catholicism to drive Catholics back to a pre-Vatican II church, which the Antichrist will be bringing in. So, but it's kind of funny because you know one thing they did prove, definitely without a shadow of a doubt. Here, let's see if I can get him. There's, you know, there's a, the Vatican Guard guy there just watching this whole mess. But uh, one thing they did prove uh, is that uh, Ruckman, Peter Ruckman used to say, you know, um, what was it? Uh, all the clowns aren't in the circus. Well, there you go. You know, there are a lot of clowns in this circus here. But um, this one here is kind of just insane. He actually, I came out years and years ago. With this video, novice Steven Anderson throws a temper tantrum and swears where he cussed a guy out in his church. And uh, and Anderson actually came out with this video here defending the use of profanity. His use of profanity. So let's let's watch this. I mean, it, you know, this this guy here just he's I don't know what he's part of. I have no idea. Uh, Eric Phelps said he's a Jesuit coadjutor. I have no idea, you know, but he's. He's just, he's a servant of hell is what he is trying to redefine what it means to be a Bible believing Christian and whatever else, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I see a thing here about the, the, um, uh, Joe major and, and Manly Perry thing. Yeah. We'll talk maybe about that later, but, but listen to some of this stuff. He actually defends profanity using profanity. Hey everybody, Pastor Stephen Anderson here from Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. So recently the accusation has been made that I myself and Faithful Word Baptist Church and the new IFB have changed or that we're going in a new direction. And I'm going to prove in this video with the facts that that is just completely false. Now this is not a new accusation. People constantly pull this out when they want to explain why they just do a 180 from being one of my biggest fans or the biggest supporters of our church to turning around and becoming an opponent or a critic of our church. And so they don't want to admit that they're the ones that have changed. They want to blame it on us. That we, yeah, that was damage control again here, Anderson. We supposedly changed. But let me get into the actual examples given by this pastor that recently made this accusation that uh, we're going in a new direction. Okay. First of all, he brought up the cussing from the pulpit. You know, supposedly my quote unquote, cussing from the pulpit is a new development. Now, anybody who has listened to my preaching for any length of time knows how ridiculous that is. Since for the past 14 years, biblical words like damn, hell, piss, bastard, ass have flowed from my lips in my sermons freely. <laughs> uh, yeah, just freely flowed from his lips. 
you know, um, those words, when you take them in context, are never used as a, you know, in, in the sense of profanity. You know, ass in the Bible is always a donkey. Okay, when you read about hell in the Bible, it's always about, you know, where people go, the damned go there. You know, it's never used, you know, get the H out of here or what the H is that all about, you know, whatever. Somebody's damned. It's talking again about somebody being sent to hell. I mean, it, it's just insane. For the last 14 years of preaching consistently, I could point to some concrete examples like in 2007 when I preached against Billy Graham and called him Billy Bastard. 2009, there was a very famous video that got hundreds of thousands of views where I... About the views there, Anderson. Yep, of course. I'm preaching hard against Obama, and a guy uh, tries to disrupt the service, and I scream, get the hell out of here if you don't like this kind of preaching. Okay. okay. Which I covered right there. You know, this is the one. I preached, and, and you know, I put this video out there in 2013. You know, so... There's a thing out here. Okay. Um, Bastard Barry. That's an entire sermon I did in 2014 about Barack Obama called Bastard Barry. And then in April of 2019, I did a whole sermon called Iceland, the Nation of Bastards. And uh, those are just a few examples. You know, anybody who's listened to my preaching knows that this is not something new. This is something that I've been criticized and attacked for using those words for the last 14 years consistently because. Yeah, it's, hey, you know, I've been using profanity for 14 years. What's the big deal? Not a big problem. Uh, it's a very easy way to spot that you're lost. You know, when you get saved, I mean, before I was saved, I had a filthy mouth. Before a lot of people are saved, they have filthy mouths. All right. It's just, and then you get saved and you start to hate profanity. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many Christians I've talked to and, and they don't have foul mouths. You know, and I've seen, you know, been around lost wicked people and they'll control their language you know when they're around women and children but apparently not anderson he can just you know use profanity from the pulpit but listen to what he says here we aren't going to watch much more of this you know frankly i believe that every word in the bible is appropriate to use and you know i don't think that there's anything wrong with those words just because someone declared them a cuss word well i don't agree with that you know if they're in the bible then I'm going to use them and I'm going to use them freely and in a lot of different contexts. The Bible uses them in a lot of different contexts. So. <laughs> no, it doesn't. What a liar. What a total liar. Not one verse of scripture to back that up. But, you know, again, Anderson with all of his nutty, stupid nonsense. And I, I just like the guy just ticks me off so much. He's so false. He's he's I mean, why is he still on YouTube? I keep saying that, you know, he's here to make us Bible believing Christians look bad and just to show something here again i got another community guidelines strike from which one marching design exposed part five hate speech all right i i got another one now so i'm up to three community guidelines strikes because of my exposés of of anderson's anti-jew propaganda film so i'm trying to show that he is a hate preacher He's anti-Semitic, but I'm getting my channel, you know, I'm getting ch strikes on my channel. So, and they're, they're warning me if this happens again, I won't be able to do any things like upload post or live stream for one week, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, I mean, it, it's insanity. I'm getting attacked for hate speech because I'm trying to expose a man who's a hate criminal, you know, I mean, just, let me just show you something here real quickly. Uh, BBC Stephen Anderson. Right there, the American hate preacher. You know, the BBC reports on the guy being a hate preacher. And I try to expose him, and I'm guilty of hate speech. I mean, weird. Weird. So, but then this was sent to me by a brother, and this thing of Michael Pearl, this was August 20th of 2019, so not that long ago. Um... I always felt really kind of weird about this guy. Uh, you know, sometimes I think, well, like maybe he's saved. I, I don't know and whatever. But this was just downright heretical. Um, he goes off on this whole thing of, well, people who never heard 
who have never heard the gospel go to hell. And he basically says you can live as a righteous person and you can go to heaven and whatever else. Then at the end, he kind of just, well, yeah, but, you know, for those of us who are sinners like me and you, you know, well, then we need Jesus to, you know, he died on the cross for sinners and blah, 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 you know. But listen to what he says here. Not only they who do them, but those who have pleasure in them that do them. In other words, not only the people worthy of death that commit these acts, but the people who indulge in their acts vicariously and find it entertaining or delightful or pleasurable to imagine doing those things, they're equally worthy of death. Okay. He's, he's in Romans chapter 1. Um, he's been going through the Old Testament and uh, showing examples of men who were justified by faith before the law was given. And he's saying, well, see, then you can do the same thing today without the gospel, you know, without whatever. He just, you just live good and whatever. But listen to what he says coming up here. Now, I didn't write this. God did. Well, rendered every man according to their deeds. This is in Romans now. God will render to every man according to their deeds. So you don't believe in Christianity? Fine. Go out and do the kind of deeds that'll earn you a place in God's kingdom. Who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory, honor, and immortality. I'm in Romans 2, 7. God gives them eternal life. Those who patient, continue in well-doing, seeking for glory, honor, immortality, comma, God gives them eternal life. Unto them that are contentious and obey not the truth, but obey unrighteousness, there's indignation, wrath, tribulation, anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, the Jew first and also the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. Now God, before he gets into the redemption of Jesus Christ in the book of Romans, Paul reveals this natural plan of salvation. In other words, you live it, you do it, you obey, you walk in righteousness, you'll not be damned. There you heard it. Okay. Guy's a stinking heretic. You know, I mean, there's just no way. And, and, he, and he's saying it through, throughout the video. Um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff, you know. And the guy writes sex manuals and stuff like this, but oh, he was pure and chaste before he got married. Never looked at pornography or anything else. And he's, he's, you know, written things that are just so vexing. I've read a few of his books and, and it's just awful. But then, you know, he'll go into the thing. And of course, his followers, his little cult following will write and say, well, you know, you didn't watch the whole video. I watched the whole video. And he gets to the end and he basically says, all you have to do is just believe in Jesus. Easy believism. So, you know, major issues there but whatever i'll uh go back to this thing again i guess and uh where were some okay i guess we'll go over some questions or whatever here but uh yeah so <laughs> That's about all, I guess, the different things up in there. Um, but just funny how that the ESV comes out. You know, they have a Catholic edition now. You know, I'll probably use the Pope participating in that circus thing sometime in the future. <laughs> I mean, doing something about that. But uh, the whole Stephen Anderson thing, I just, I wish that guy was going off the off of YouTube. You know, they're just, they're proving how fake they are with this whole thing of keeping him up. You know, I mean whatever just irritates me but um anyhow uh there's a brother that wrote um there was a brother that wrote from uh lithuania or something like that in the last live stream and he was wondering if i got the letter i'm lagging a little bit here i guess Okay. Um, but anyways, I did get the letter. Letter, it's um, on um, the thing of privacy for a Christian. So I will be to Estonia. Okay. Thank you. Um, there I see the your thing over here. So Estonia, yeah, we did get the letter. That's a very, very, very um, big issue between my wife and I. You know, we've talked about it for many, many years. So 
We're definitely going to be doing a big study on that. Probably we'll both be in it. So, uh, but anyways, question. Brother Brian, what should a Christian do if and or when the government calls for gun confiscation? <sighs> well, that's a, that's one of those things that's going to be kind of, you're just going to have to pray about it, you know, and I mean, uh, that's something, again, another thing we've talked about, my wife and I and, and whatever. Um, I mean, you can hide the guns. You can you can uh, decide, you know, I don't want to live in a country where I can't defend myself. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that's, a, that's a question you need to pray about. Um, so, OK, another one question. Did you see Breaker's latest garbage on the rapture? I plan to do a video on this soon. But he is now telling people to look for the Antichrist before the catching away. Guy is such a faker. No, I did not hear about that, brother. <laughs> you know, just crazy. Uh, these people, I'll tell you what. Um, the Antichrist is not going to show up before the body of Christ leaves. I mean, it's just so obvious. The Christians, the 24 elders, and then the great, you know, the 100 or 10,000 times 10,000, they are in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed. You know, it's just so simple. You know, you just kind of go, duh, you know. But see, they'll do Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I've been in this whole thing, this rapture debate issue for many years. I know they're, I know how they do things. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Oh, look, it says that the man of sin is to be revealed first. No, it doesn't say that. You have to keep reading. Because then it talks about what's withholding the Antichrist from showing up. And it's, you know, the body of Christ. So, um, but anyways. On to another question here. Um, question, Brother Brian, should a Christian join a Christian community or church, even if it believes in serpent seed and Christian identity? No, I wouldn't join it. If it believes in the serpent seed and Christian identity thing, I'd stay away from it. Um, question, do you think when Adam and Eve ate of the apple that their DNA changed? I don't know. Uh, you know, the theory, you could come up with that. But uh, if there's no scripture really getting into that, then I would say, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, because obviously they lost, they would have lived forever, you know, had they not eaten of that tree. So, and I don't think it doesn't actually say apple either. So watch out for that. But uh, question, what do you think about vegans? There's five men where I work turned vegan after watching a documentary on Netflix. Do you think, or do you, this could possibly start relating to first Sunday chapter four. Yeah, veganism, I have a big problem with veganism. Um, it's not a healthy way to live. I had a cousin who was a vegan and her boys were very, their growth was very much stunted. Veganism is, is bad news. When you when you start uh, going and saying that you can't have honey and you can't have milk and you can't have butter and you can't have cheese and you can't, you know, you're getting off into some really wacky stuff there. Um, but yeah, first Timothy chapter four, where it talks about, you know, um, commanding to abstain from meats. Yeah. You're getting into that doctrines of devils. Um, question. If I am the only, uh, I don't know what that would, I'm seeing a little bit there. Um, where, what do I do for fellowship and gathering? Well, if you're the only, okay. Born again, King James Bible believing Christian. Okay. Finally got it. Um, what should you do for fellowship and gathering? Well, uh, that's kind of the purpose of evangelism that, you, you know, want to go out and witness to people and things. If you don't have anybody to fellowship with, then just try to, you know, witness to people and, and whatnot. And, um, you know, it is rough right now because there's not many Christians out there and it's getting worse all the time. So, um, See here if there's any other questions. Is the mafia part of the Roman Catholic system? Well, mafia members are Catholics. So you can, you know, you, the, if you'd say yes to that, then the Catholics would say, we never sanctioned the mafia, whatever. Yeah, but they're all Catholic when you look into their religion. So.
yeah. And again, it works out perfectly. You know, you get a, a mafia guy and he goes out and guns down a bunch of people. You just go and you do your confession, pay your money, and you're absolved of all your sin. Question, can a person only be saved by reading from the KJV? Can just talking with a person and praying with them save them even if they read a different version? Well, uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the, the King James Bible has to be involved there somehow. Um, I would say if somebody reads a gospel tract or whatever else, because I, I talked about this in one of the Q&A things or FAQs or whatever. Um, somebody can, can understand the basics of the gospel, understand that they're a sinner and whatever else. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to just come right out and say, yeah, you can definitely be saved out of a, a new version or whatever. It, it's people loophole of all this other stuff. So I'm careful what I say with that. Um, but certainly, you know, you understand the gospel. The Lord will eventually lead you to the King James Bible as his perfect word for English speaking Christians. Say it that way. Um, question. I have a friend at school who is receptive to the gospel, but he is into Nazism. He recently got suspended for threatening a sodomite student. How should I witness to him? Well, let him understand that Nazism is basically they were in bed with the Catholics and, and whatever else. There was a lot of problems there. And, um, you know, ask him if he's a sinner. That's the best place, you know. I mean, uh, that's where you should start out. Break down their self-righteous pride. Question. How does Paul know that one day we will judge angels? Well, I believe because the Lord revealed it to him. Um, about all I can say on that one. Question. How should a Christian deal with someone that is possessed? I've never encountered such a person, but I was wondering, person, but I was wondering, uh, what to do if I happen to fall into a situation like that? Well, I have seen people that are possessed and, um, you know, it, you, this whole charismatic thing of come out of them and all this other stuff. You know, uh, the Pauline epistles don't say anything about casting devils out. Okay. Um, you know, uh, again, it's, 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 I can't really just give a, a formula for how to deal with people like that. You know, I've, uh, I knew a, a guy that he was drunk and, and he spoke, you know, this devil spirit started speaking out of him and things. And, um, I wasn't going to witness to him because he was drunk, but, uh, you know, it, it's, again, I, I, like I said, I, I just can't, I can't give a, oh, well, just, you know, commanding, you know, just start talking about the Lord is what I would do. Quote verses of scripture from the Bible and things. So, should a Bible, a born again King James Bible believing Christian do martial arts for self-defense? Martial arts, I think, is, is a lot of kooky stuff, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, I think, you know, you get into some of the stuff, it's like Japanese dance or something. I mean, you know, I had a nephew that was in taking Taekwondo or something like that, and, and he was supposed to be, you know, fighting with some girl, and they had all the headgear stuff on and whatever else, and he punched her in the face, and they and he got disqualified for hitting her in the face. And, I, and he said, you know, he wasn't supposed to do that because she was a girl. And I said, yeah, you shouldn't have, but, you know, she shouldn't have been in the class, first of all. And secondly, what are they teaching you? Don't hit somebody in the face, you know, and, and don't hit them too hard or whatever. Not really a big thing on the martial arts, but sorry. Question, if Paul said he came not to baptize but to preach the gospel, wouldn't he be in disobedience to the Great Commission? This one stumps me. Some dispensationalists say baptism is not for today. Uh, thanks. Um, Paul did baptize people. Um, he did, you know, talk about that. But he was he was ma meaning that, you know, he can kind of give that duty to other people. OK, I'm preaching the gospel. Hey, brother, so and so this sister here, this brother here wants to be baptized. That's all he was saying. He wasn't saying that it's wrong to baptize. Um, let's see here. Question, Brother Brian, I really want to start a new career path. I'm very sore vexed from it. Do you think welding is a good idea to get into? Yeah, welding's a good profession. Um, you know, uh, I mean, it, it's something I think that oh, there's always going to be a need for welding and whatever else, whether automotive or any kind of thing like that. Good thing. Question, are angels walking amongst us? And how can we identify them because they wouldn't be able to sin, right? Uh, no, I, I think animal, angel, angels could sin, 
definitely they they can fall and whatever else um but they the book of hebrews talks about entertaining angels unawares um how can you tell what they look like you can't they look like regular men they don't have wings question what are your thoughts on les felsdick i don't know anything about him um question did you receive our package some different things regarding the trinity from illinois yeah i did thank you for that um I, what I'm doing is I'm taking a lot of the stuff we get and then I put it over here on a pile and whatever else. I think um, the thing about the University of Baptist School, I think is what you're talking about there. Um, and so we will, uh, you know, I'm putting it over there and then I'll get to it. So question, how do you look into finding grocery rejects of produce, etc.? cetera? I recall you saying you found potatoes very cheap a while back. I'm waiting for farmers markets to open up in the spring. Um, we had actually, there's a, a lot of potato growing up here. It's, you know, the two biggest industries of Northern Maine are logging and potato growing. Um, and there was a, they, the one guy has his own little storefront and he had potatoes that, that, you know, they, when it goes through the harvest or the big thing, it digs it up and whatever else they'll, some of these, these blades will cut part of the potato off and they call them penny wise potatoes or whatever. And, and they're damaged. And you know we can we got we were getting a fifty pound bag I think at first for three dollars and then five dollars later on so um, go right to the farmers is what I would recommend just watch out for the uh, um, watch out for the uh, GMO stuff so okay. I'm afraid that, that if you are wrong about the rapture and it's post-trib that will cause the huge falling away we read about, don't you think it's smart for to hope for pre-trib but prepare for post-trib? No, I don't, because it's a matter of faith. It's a matter of understanding that Jesus Christ died for my sins, he paid for my sins, and the resurrection is part of salvation. Um, if he has us go into that time period, then what's the, what's the point of the time of Jacob's trouble? Um, I have studied the issue a lot. And I'm not trying to be prideful or anything else. I know the issue quite well. Um, the Lord is going to be catching up his bride before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. And uh, and by the way, if we did fall away, what would that mean? A Christian is eternally secured. We are sealed until the day of redemption. So what would it mean if a Christian fell away? Doesn't mean anything. Question, using the King James Version, what's the difference between the words servant and slave? A lot of new versions especially change servant to slave in the New Testament thought. Um, well, you know, the King James Bible there does say bond servant. So when you are bound, you're essentially a slave. Um, I mean, you can get into debate and a thing back and forth. But, you know, uh, it should, you know, King James Bible is the right one uh, without getting into a big thing on that. Question, what should I do if my family is Catholic and keeps rejecting the truth? I have a young sister, and I want her to know the Lord Jesus, but it's difficult because of my pagan family. Um, a lot of prayer. Uh, Catholics are very hard to get to, very hard. But there's, you know, I mean, show them the whole thing of the Pope participating in the circus and just say, is this Christ's church? You know, the pedophilia, whatever else. Another good thing to do is show them the catechism. Um, show them Catholic sources and say, the catechism says this, the Bible says that. Which one are you going to choose? You know, it's a good way to do it. Question, Fenninger is making videos against me. I proved dispensational salvation. He always says it's talking about physical salvation. How should I answer his physical salvation argument? Um, is it uh, Ezekiel 28, I think? Where it talks about... Uh, Thou hast delivered thy soul. Uh, right down here. No, not 28. I'm trying to think of where that one verse is at. Um, delivered thy soul. I'll just type that in quick. Ezekiel 3. Excuse me, not 28. What was I thinking? 28. Okay, give, uh, this is one for Pale Eddie. Um, uh, Ezekiel 3.19, Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, not, uh, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy 
soul. Okay, verse 21. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. It's not physical. Okay, and you can go into, you know, um, Revelation chapter 14. You know, the that if somebody takes the mark of the beast in the time of Jacob's trouble, they have, you know, they go to hell. That's not physical salvation. So he's he's just a nut, uh, Fenninger. Um, okay, trying to catch up here on the. Uh, question can you do a video on how to garden and grow your own food if you grow your own food uh <laughs> funny story actually i tried to grow garlic this year and a stinking bull moose came and ate my whole crop no joke i came out the one morning and got got up i was walking out towards where our my garden area was a big old bull moose stands up, looks at me, you know, and I thought, oh, no, you know, I wasn't going to argue with him, you know. So there's a uh, moose walking around the woods up there at our property um, that's in good health today because he ate a lot of our garlic. So question, what do you think about video games? And is it OK for a Christian to play video games as long as it is not obsessive? I've never really seen that, you know, that you well. <laughs> You get into this debate thing on the video game deal and whatever else. And I've been through this with a lot of the brethren. Um, video games are a waste of time. Just face it. They are a waste of time. I played them a lot growing up, a whole lot. Uh, much of my life was, was wasted with video games. And I look back now and I wish that I would never have played any of them. Okay. Um, I'm not going to get into a debate of, of, you know, will you go to hell if you're playing video games or something? You know, now I get a list of scriptures that prove works were involved for salvation in the Old Testament. Um, you can look up, uh, like I said, Ezekiel chapter three. There is, is really good. Um, Hebrews chapter ten, I think it is, um, is also a real good one as well. Um, I know uh, Brother Jacob Thompson just brought out a video about salvation by faith and works in the Old Testament. So you can watch that as well. Um, question. Do you think the Lord chose Paul as a vessel because of his rampant and overly enthusiastic persecution of the early church because it sent a greater message to his Jewish bosses? Yeah, I think so. You know, too much as... Uh, um, Okay, I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, you know, to whom much is forgiven, much more shall be required. The Bible talks about that. Um, can I do a video specifically on the rapture? I'm interested in your opinion, or do you have one? Uh, I have a whole playlist. Um, see if I can find that real quick here. I've done, uh, I think it's over 140 sermons on the rapture. Um, and it's a beautiful subject. I mean, it's not some kind of people make it into this really contentious thing and whatever else. It is it is an amazing subject and um, such a it, it brings so much joy into your life when you realize the truths of the Bible just plainly spells it out. Um, about the coming, you know, the Lord's coming before the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, finding the thing here. Yeah, 154, 154 different videos on that subject. I'll put put it in the comments here. There's the uh, link down there. So, um, I'll go back here real quick. I'll post a comment. Um, down here to add a public comment. I'll put the link down there. Um, I'll just write pre trib. Playlist. It's on another channel. Um, 
So there you go. There's a link. Okay. Um, question. Can you recommend a book on KJV difficult passages? Oh, boy. Hmm. I know Peter Ruckman has one on the thing of uh, errors in the King James Bible. I forget what it's called now, but um, it's a good question. I don't really have one I can name off the top of my head. Okay. All right. You know, on, on the rapture issue, I just got to say a few more things. And that is um, there are, you know, I did a whole series of, of studies going through the Pauline epistles from Romans through Philemon, um, going through and, and looking at how many times Paul's referring to the resurrection, to being called up, to being with the Lord. And it was just one of the neatest studies I think I've ever done. I was so, you know, and I, I'm not saying that I did a good job. I'm saying it was a neat study of looking through the scriptures and just concrete evidence that the body of Christ is gone. Um, before then so um, but anyhow any other questions probably going to get going here before real long probably about two o'clock you know again I want to kind of get going Okay, question. Do you know that the mother of harlots is prophesied in the Old Testament, Isaiah 57, catching up, first two verses, the mother of harlots also, 47? Haven't looked into that. I'll have to check that, check that out. Um, Zachary and Christ, question. My unbelieving mother and grandparents, when I was sitting, the peace and joy of the Holy Ghost said that I don't have God with me, within me, but a devil, that they blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Um, they can only blaspheme the Holy Spirit in the sense of the unpardonable sin, you know, kind of thing that it won't be forgiven them in this life, in this world or the world to come when it's in Jesus Christ, because they don't understand the spirit that you have because they're lost. So, but it is very serious what they said. Um, Brother Brown, I just watched Mike Hogger's video on the rapture and it made me physically sick to my stomach. I think he's off the rails. I think you meant to say there. Yeah, he went off a long time ago, rejecting dispensationalism and all the other stuff. So, a question, when King Solomon asked for wisdom, do you think he received earthly wisdom wisdom or hidden wisdom? Um, I think a little bit of both, actually. All right, and uh, so. Uh, what are your thoughts on Trinitarians that are new versions and some that supposedly use the King James Bible but yet deny the true teaching of the biblical Godhead? They get spoiled by philosophy. People do that. Um, Question, have you heard of Gino Jennings on YouTube? Listen to him, your soul will get fed. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Gino Jennings is one of those prideful, arrogant, lost heretics out there. Um, the man has got so much pride, it's just insane. And I heard him, I listened to him long before I was ever even on YouTube. So I'm very familiar with Gino Jennings. Um, Acts chapter 2, you know, 38 or whatever, salvation. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um what is the blue and white white and blue flag behind you looks new yeah it's a the this one here is the bavarian flag and then there's one over that way over that way on the window if i can point to it there we go that's a jerusalem flag so um question what preachers would you recommend i know that the bible is the final authority and that all men of god aren't correct about every topic um i can't really recommend anybody i mean you know peter ruckman has some good stuff uh so many guys that I would have recommended in the past have come out with some real heretical stuff. So if I recommend them, then people say, oh, then he's okay with King James Bible. You know, check everything by the word of God. Um, what do you think about upcoming economic collapse? Um, it's going to be bad. It's going to be really, really, really bad. Uh, just I, I keep up with it. Um, and 
it's just, it's insane to me that things are going on so long. I mean, I, I heard a guy recently and he said, you know, the people are saying, oh, the, you know, the economy is getting better. It's rebounding. The stock market's going up and whatever else. And he said, okay, then why did the Federal Reserve just not long ago um, just inject another 84 billion, I think it was, into the economy? And they're just printing money and printing money and printing money. It's, yeah, it's going to be bad. I can say a lot more, but we'll continue. Um, what do you think of Jason Cooley? Uh, well, if he's a post-tribber, then he's got serious problems. Um, he came out and called me a fool a while back because I said he had a false god and stuff. So, whatever. Um, Paul said it is better to marry than to burn for a single man, not for one that was married already. Stop teaching people to disobey Luke 16, Mark 4, 10, Matthew 19, Romans, E first. Corinthians 7. Okay, I'm not really sure where you're going with that one. Um, stop teaching people to disobey. And uh, Sorry, I'm not following you on that one. Was King Solomon a, a magician? Because according to Jewish mysticism, Freemasonry, and other sources, he was. Well, his, his strange wives turned away his heart from the Lord. And he worshiped three false gods. Interesting number there. Three separate persons, you might say. So speaking of Trinity stuff, I got to show you something here. This is top secret. To my viewers here of the live stream, you're going to see something top secret. I will be wearing this in an upcoming video. Too cold today, and I don't have the notes done yet, but. There and there. So had a custom T-shirt made. So um, <laughs> Jason Cooley and Jeremy Carter are friends again. They reconciled after we kicked him out. I wonder how he's Jeremy's reconciling a. Uh, Jason's thing against uh, women in pants, because that was the big, you know, one of their big issues. Um, okay, so. Okay. Where did I get the shirt from? I'm seeing a lot of people saying that. Um, well, I, there's a, a website, um, rushordertees.com, I think is where it's called. And you can design your own T-shirt. So I did. It should be fun. Um did you ever experience sleep paralysis? Um, well, I've, I've had sort of almost a paralysis type of thing when, I, when um, I've when i had different weird experiences with devils coming into the room. You know, so I have experienced some of that um, where I, I get so scared I can't barely even move. And I talked about that, I you know, spiritual encounters with the Physical encounter, encounters with the spiritual realm, I think, is what the video was called. So you can watch that if you want more information. Um, should a quick Christian remarry? Well, again, that depends on the situation. I can't, I can't go into a, a whole big deal on that. Um, remarriage is there in, um, in the scriptures in First Corinthians chapter seven. Um, but and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. You know, talking about, you know, art, art thou loose from a wife? You know, seek not to be. Um, I'll look up the verse so I don't get the quotation wrong. First Corinthians chapter seven and verse uh, verse twenty-seven. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. But and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. 
obviously it's talking about, you know, if you get into it, the biblical grounds for divorce is fornication. If your wife or your husband, depending on what you are, male or female, um, if they uh, go out and commit fornication and you divorce them, you can get remarried. Okay. Uh, custom t-shirt thing, was it expensive? It wasn't real cheap. It was, I think, 30 something dollars or whatever else. But I mean, they, they're custom making it. So, um, uh, question If there is not a born again man available, can a woman baptize another woman? Um, hmm. Uh, uh, again, that's kind of a weird question to ask. I don't, I don't know what to say about that one. Um, why did Peter say to be baptized in Jesus' name when Christ commanded the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Been saved one year now. I'm studying baptism. Thanks. Um, there's actually, um, yeah, there in the Book of Acts, it actually says that they were baptized in, in you know, the name of Jesus. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, either one is correct. I'm not going to squabble over that and fight over that. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We're quoting scripture, but the name of the Father and Son and Holy Ghost is Jesus. So, question Did you see that James White came out with a new revision of the Forgotten Trinity? I will order one for research for my book. No, I didn't hear about that, brother. That's interesting. Hopefully, he got, you know, the Jesuit uh, Mitch Pack was recommendation on the back, though, because you got to get a Jesuit to endorse your book on the Catholic Trinity. Question, could you do a video explaining why it is bad to cook with baking soda, baking powder? Sister Catherine mentioned something about it in your pancake video. Uh, well, I can answer that real quickly. Uh, where is there a baking soda tree? Where is there a baking soda herb? Where is there a baking soda anything? It's not natural. It's a chemical. If you look it up, it's actually called chemical leavening. Um, you know, yeast or bacteria, uh, you know, that that can leaven, you know, bread and whatever else. But um, baking soda is a way to chemically leaven. So, you know, I used to be a big fan of baking soda, you know, using your toothpaste and whatever else and stuff. Not anymore. Um, watch the whole thing on that. So got to be careful with that. Question. A Jehovah's Witness stopped by this morning explaining that Jesus is Michael, the archangel in heaven and Jesus on earth. I know that's not true, but how can I refute that kindly? Um, yeah, I, I heard that thing too, you know, different times. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> that's what, so, so you get into these questions, people come up with such good questions. That's that's another good one. Um, you know, the, a good one to stump the Jehovah's Witness on is um, Revelation chapter one is a real good one. Um, you know, it talks about the revelation of Jesus Christ uh, in verse one and um, verse eight. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. And, uh, and you know, you get down through the book of Revelation there, chapter one um, and uh, verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Um, he doesn't say he's Michael the arch archangel. So, um, but I'd have to do a, a bigger study on that. That's a good question. Um, let me see here. Uh, question, I am... I and many are suffering from the high MFs now being propagated. I am single and have some respite with a protected enclosure. Many have families and are suffering. Any advice on helpful herbs? Ooh, the EMF thing is a real problem, uh, especially as, as a lot of areas are starting to go to 5G. Um, I know a lot of people are saying areas where they're at, they're not seeing very many birds. We still have birds in our area, so we're very blessed by that. But um Herbs and, and whatever cures and things for EMF fields. Eww. I don't have a good answer for that right now. Um, hmm.
Brian, have you seen the documentary put out by Christopher Lee, Hollywood actor? He talks about how black magic and the dark side of the supernatural is a form of escapism. No, I haven't heard about that. Uh, haven't seen anything about that. Um, not saying it's not true or whatever, you know, just haven't looked into it. Someone told me that if, that if there was none with me, fellow saved, should I water baptize myself? Um, that's a, it's a problem that remains. It's just a problem. You know, it's, it's just there. People, you know, want to get baptized. Nobody's around their area. Um, if a man or woman refuses to be intimate in a marriage, is that grounds for divorce in the Bible? Well, I've heard that one, but I've never seen any clear scriptures that say that. They say, well, you're not joining, you know, body or whatever else. Eh, you know, I think that there's more issues there. I've known of situations where, you know, there's intimacy breaks down and things and, and um, husbands messing around with pornography or whatever. And the wife knows about it. It's a real good way to, you know, tell your wife that uh, she's not good looking enough or whatever. I mean, it's, you gotta be careful with that stuff. You know, there's, I would say there's some things that need to be cleaned up in a marriage if there's, you know, a lack of intimacy. Question, people, Pentecostals who speak gibberish claiming to speak in tongues, are they all lost? Uh, I can't answer that. I can't. You know, uh, again, I'd have to go by a case by case thing. How long have they been doing it? Uh, you know, whatever. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not able to answer that one completely. Um, where are you located at? Uh, Maine, Northern Maine. Um, so sorry for a strange question. That's not strange. I just, you know, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, there's, it's, it's hard. There's just so few Christians out there and, you know, we can connect with each other online, but it's kind of great. There's not many people. I can't just be traveling around all over the country. I have a life that I live here, um, but I understand, that, you know, she wants to get saved and whatever else. Um, salvation is, is not, you know, whether you get baptized or not. I, I do believe in baptism, but it's not going to mean heaven or hell one way or the other there. Um, Saw a man wearing a long shirt, but he had a gospel t-shirt. And when approached the guy, he had the major right doctrines, believes the King James Bible. Um, wearing a long, a long skirt. I have no idea. Um. What actually constitutes a biblical marriage? I don't read about wedding rings in the scripture. Yeah, they're not in there. It's just a thing that some people do and whatever else. Again, I'm not going to make a big deal. Somebody wants to wear a wedding ring, whatever. Um, I don't I don't really consider that a big issue. But uh, a biblical marriage in scripture is that you're coming together to live as husband and wife. And you're not hiding it. You're not doing it in secret or whatever else. And, of course, the marriage bed is the consummation of that thing getting married so do you accept donations from interracial christian couples i have no idea i get people send me things and whatever else and send me letters and i don't know i have no idea you know again i get asked questions and i tell people what i believe the bible says and teaches and then people make it into this thing of i hate people or something like that Question, what will be your upcoming videos regarding Bible version issue? More about the Godhead, more of exposing false prophet. Uh, a lot of different things are going to be coming up. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of, uh, you know, what I'm going to be doing in the future or whatever else. Um, I've read that antioxidant rich foods can help block DNA damage from EMF fields. Vitamin E can protect the cell membrane from damage. I did not know that. Um, 
but that's that's some good advice. Thank you very much for that, sister. Really appreciate that. Uh, definitely something to look into. And you know, again, what she's saying there, Google some of that stuff. You know, antioxidant-rich foods and um, vitamin E and things. Uh, natural health cures for EMF fields or you know, whatever else. Uh, do your own research. You know, be your own doctor. Pray about it. Say, Lord, okay, what would you have me? Um, learn and, and can I pass this information on to other people? I'll try it out on myself, see if it makes a difference, whatever. Um, so I'm a little bit past two o'clock here, uh, so I'm probably going to get going, I guess. But uh, thank you to everybody out there that that uh, comments and things. And, and um, just thought I'd do a real quick little live stream today. It's it's always good to talk to the brethren. I always like to. Uh, hear from people and, and things. So, okay, just looking here at some of the other comments that have come up, but uh, gonna get going here. And um, so, we'll see everybody in future upcoming videos. Have a bunch of different stuff planned. Um, so, I gotta get going back down to. Um, you know, our property, we're big snowstorm coming tonight, so we just came up here for a little bit of time. So, I got to get going. So, talk to everybody later. Thank you for watching.